Welcome to the Online Course Masters Show, where we learn from the best online course creators how to better create and sell our very own courses. As always, I'm your host, Phil Ebener, and today I chat with James Hurst, who just started teaching in 2017, and his very first course is on a surprising topic that might make you want to be a kid again. His entire story, including his $100 course creator startup kit, is coming right up. Visit OnlineCourseMasters.com for show notes to watch the video version of this episode and see an archive of all our past guests. Please subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you listen. Please, if you haven't done so already, leave a review for this show wherever you listen to it. Now, let's get straight to the interview. All right, today I am so excited to have James Hurst here on the show with me. He's a passionate member of the Online Course Masters Facebook group, and he's the perfect person to talk to right now. I've been getting a lot of requests from listeners asking, oh, I just want to hear someone who is starting out, who's not one of these big shots talking about making five, six figures a year. And I think you have talked about having a perfect cheap setup, getting started out, and that's kind of where you are. So first, welcome to the show, and I'm so excited to chat today. Thanks, Phil. Really honored to be here. Cool. Well, what I'm going to start off with, my first question is, what do you love about teaching online courses? Okay, so um, I, I'm kind of a tech guy. I've, I've been a uh, you know, interested in technology for a long time. And also just making money online has always been interesting to me. Uh, you know, the classic digital nomad lifestyle and making money online. Um, but I've also just, I also just love teaching people too. I've just naturally been a teacher. I've, I like, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly like a, a passionate learner. And I think people that like to learn, like to teach, I kind of have ADD and, uh, and with ADD comes, you know, ha- having the uh, all the different variety of skill sets that re- that's required. It's just a perfect fit for me because I, I t- once I learn something, I like to move on to the next thing. And and so I'm I've, I'm just on this long kind of steep learning curve of video editing, audio editing, uh, instructional design, and uh, planning my course. I get to be an actor when I'm on screen. You know, I get to be the director. Um, and so there's just so many facets of it uh, that, I, that I just absolutely love. It's such a great fit for someone who has multiple interests. I, obviously, like yourself, with the variety of courses that you teach, um, you probably have a little ADD in you as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, you nailed it right there with, you know, if you're passionate about learning all these things, then it is a great fit. And I think that's sometimes yeah. where people get caught up if they – are into into video editing or if they're not into being on in front of the camera that's where they can struggle but everyone is learning i'm always learning new new things yeah. doing this process and i think w- no one starts teaching online knowing exactly how to do every single part no. of the process so that's what we're here to do and try to help but um tell us a little bit more about your background and uh what you've been up to before teaching sure. your first online courses Sure. So um, I graduated from BYU in information systems, and I've, I've since high school I've been taking, you know, HTML, and I had a Q Basic class, is how kind of how it started, and did a little bit of web development. I also did um, through college. I had a window cleaning business, and as part of that, I I created my own um, page on in HTML online. I started driving traffic that way, doing local SEO. Um, I still actually do lead gen on that window cleaning website today. And I just uh, take those leads and send them off to another window cleaning company and take a cut of that. So I've had some um, background in internet marketing. Uh, I used to work for an internet marketing company. I used to run AdWords campaigns for companies. And uh, so I was kind of in that world, but I kind of got tired of chasing uh, Google's algorithm because they're always changing it. I didn't want to be number one on the page you know, the first uh, on, on a certain day and then the next day being on page two, I just kind of got tired of chasing Google's algorith- algorithmic changes. But uh, but um, yeah, like I said before, I love learning and I'm, inter- I'm interested in photography and design and business and Internet marketing and and everything like that. I love it. And um, my probably my first exposure to online learning was Lynda.com. Uh, I was looking I was checking my history and uh, I had been on there since 2011. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. When I found mm-hmm. lynda.com, I was I was like in, I was in hog heaven. You know, I'm not I'd, I'd much rather subscribe to Lynda than be on net, like Netflix or something else like that. I'm just that's just how I'm wired is to to be learning. I just enjoy learning. And so um, I had sometimes I'd have employers that that would pay for uh, lynda.com for me. But if they weren't, I was paying out of pocket uh, 25 bucks a month out of pocket on my own for this unlimited library of courses. And so I think that's where my initial love for online learning uh, came to be. And then as part of my job as a solutions architect for BYU, so I'm a, I'm a web services, I'm a cloud architect for BYU and I work a lot with Amazon web services and, and designing things for the cloud. And there's a big, big, t- um, um, movement in the tech industry right now to get things out of the local data centers into the cloud. And uh, as part of that, there was this, you know, 20 hour course by Ryan, Ryan Kroonenberg on um, IWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate. And he's one of the great success stories uh, of Udemy and he's got his A-Cloud Guru website now. Anyway, so sure, just like everyone else, you know, I, I took the te- I took the $10 course, I, you know, and got, a tw- uh, got 20 hours of content um, for 10 bucks. And while doing that, it was literally this, that little button in, in the upper right hand corner that says become an instructor, mm-hmm. uh, on you, on Udemy's homepage, you know, become an instructor. And I was like, I was like, I know the, I don't know. I know there's this screencasting thing, you know, and, uh, but I can tell that like, with Udemy, you can tell other people are doing it. Cause it's not like as, as professional as lynda.com with the studio set up and right. everything that they put into it. But I was like, I was like, people are doing this. And, um, I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to figure this out. And so I clicked on become an instructor. I gave my, my course a title. And then from there, I kind of had to learn the user interface of Udemy's back end on starting to create the back, uh, the course. And, um, and so that was really, that was really how I got started teach, uh, teaching online. Um, and that was your and, first sort of experience trying to put together an online digital product, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And so, from previous business classes and different things, you know, I was aware of like you know, there's this idea of marginal cost, right? The the, the cost to get the next customer, right? Mm-hmm. The, and I and I had already been sold on on digital products, right? Like or like a CD. This idea that you make something once, you put in the time and effort into something. And then the distribution in a digital project is just phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and, you know, I did that same math that a lot of us do where they, where they say, okay, if I sell, you know, there's, you know, this guy's got, you know, 10,000 10, students in his course. Yeah. The classic, <laughs> the classic beginner Udemy math that just, and what's, what's interesting though, is like, even though that math isn't really like that, it's not that easy. Then that math really is still there. Right. Mm-hmm. Th- that the lots of students worldwide and lots of courses that math is there and it is possible but it's just it's definitely not it's not a get rich quick um you know gonna happen right out of the gate yeah and while well, you've said a lot of interesting things one while being an amazon cloud being in the cloud world um that's a huge skill to have nowadays and yes. I, I look forward to hearing what courses you have planned in the future because your first course wasn't about that and we're going to talk about <laughs> that but you talk about being a learner first and mm-hmm. that i think is really important because even i it took me a while to to i didn't really take a lot of online courses so figuring out how to teach took me a little while. And I think being a learner first can help you because you understand, okay, this teacher does this and I really like that. Or what, what do people do that is good at for an online course? So that's really, uh, I think good. And, and yeah, just about the whole math, but like you said, there is math that works out. And to this day, I look at my, my numbers and I have, you know, it's crazy, but almost 300,000 students, of course, not every single student has paid me a hundred dollars, like sure. the list price of my courses. But um, there is sort of an a- average per enrollment that I can calculate, even right. can <clears throat> even with the free students that I get for my free courses or through free coupons. And I haven't actually really talked about this month much, but. It's been about, and this is going to seem really, really low to a lot of people, but can take into account that a lot of these students are 
came in through a free coupon or are enrolling in one of my free courses, but it's about $2 per student for me anyways. And it's been like that oh. for forever. So when I had 10,000 students, I had made about $20,000. When I had 100,000 students, I had made about $200,000. And that math has continued. And so it's not like a, an exact science. I don't think if I have a million students necessarily all have made $2 million on Udemy, but that's the way sure. it's going. But anyways, before we go down that, that rabbit hole, <laughs> I wanna ask you about your first course and what <laughs> was it about and uh, why did you decide to make that course? So, um, for those that don't know, my first course was kind of in a crazy niche topic. It was uh, how to make power wheels faster with aftermarket batteries. And th those are those, those little kid cars, the little electric cars. Yeah. And, uh, like the Barbie mobile. Kind of the backstory. <laughs> What's that? Like the Barbie mobile. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. The Barbie Jeeps and yeah. the Hot Wheels Jeeps and yeah. the, you know, the little kids cars, the electric ones. And they've been around since the eighties or in, you know, and I never had one, but the backstory on that is that my dad was like a like a lawnmower mechanic and uh, and we had like go karts and stuff and dirt bikes riding around our backyard and and uh, we always used, we had like four or five of them going and so and the neighbors would come over my friends would, and we'd all just ride and um, and so when, now that my kids are are young my kids are like I have four boys they're six oh, yeah. four and and two and then five months. And so I had this idea that I wanted to bring these power wheels. Uh, I want to do these power wheels parties for birthday parties. And so I started collecting them on uh, in, uh, Craigslist or Facebook um, news, uh, Facebook um, neighborhood group, yep. group yard sale pages. Mm -hmm. I'd start picking them up. Anyways, long story short, I, I uh, joined this group. Believe it or not, there's like a group of over 30,000 people on Facebook that modify power wheels. Like they soup them up, they put extra batteries in. Anyways, I and I've been in this group and I kept on hearing the same questions over and over and over again. These all these beginner questions. And I was like, man, the, I mean, literally the same questions over and over again. I was like, this is like the perfect thing for to make a course about because no one's doing this and it's kind of technical. I'm out in the garage shooting, you know, how to actually do the wiring on these on these cars. And I thought I had my golden ticket because when I had this course published, right, I had 30,000 people sitting in a Facebook group that I had been an active member of for over a year. Mm -hmm. And I was just waiting for that. I was so excited. I was just pumped to get this course made. It was a combination of screencasting, mm -hmm. uh, some PowerPoint slides on how to do stuff, some, um, some screencasting of the internet. And then, um, and then a lot of me out in the garage, filming this course. So, um, and I was just so excited. I was doing the math on my launch, you know, a thousand people at 10 bucks or a thousand at $20. I was going to do my, 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 my launch, my course launch with my, uh, different coupons. Mm -hmm. And, and <laughs> I don't know, I finished the course in winter. Maybe that was a bad idea. Long story short, again, I, I finally got my through a long learning curve of learning how to create courses and getting my, um, some of my videos rejected because I was recording with the, with my laptop microphone. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I launched my course and like, I made like one sale. My first month on Udemy was $2 and 50 cents. Mm. It was a serious blow, but I'm kind of like this, uh, I'm kind of like this relentless, unrelentless optimist. You know, I just, yeah. I, I have faced, I have faced stuff in the past and, you know, rejection with jobs or girls. Um, and, um, I just like, I believe in the power of putting your head down and, and pushing through, um, persistence. I am a huge believer of persistence. In fact, the job that I have right now, I took me uh, 24 tries over six years. I just continued to apply and, and apply and, Yes, is there, there, there is a time to stop and say this is not working and reevaluate. But I am a huge believer in persistence and, and think and would hope that the audience, you know, would, um, would take that lesson from this is to continue to to trudge on. And so um, and then 
And so I couldn't believe, and actually I got a little bit of backlash from that group saying, mm. Hey, you know, you're packaging up this information that we're sharing here for free and, and that you can find this on YouTube. And I'm thinking, well, you know, they monetize it with ads on YouTube. Like, you know, I, you, I'm, I spent a hundred hours, you know, learning this and making this, you can't get this anywhere else. And to this day, I've only sold a couple of courses to that 30,000 K, um, 30k Facebook group. And what did you do and when you launched it? Did you just post a coupon just, to the group and with like a little promo message? A, a, yeah, I posted the coupon to the group. Sometimes I drop in some of my videos. Like, to, I would answer a question with a video from my course. Um, and and yeah, I did try a little uh, Facebook ad campaign or or Google AdWords. I just it's hard to make it work. Uh, the, yeah. mo- the make the money work with advertising courses. Um, so, and then the next month, the only person that bought my course was actually Ryan Kroonenberg, uh, cause we, we had connected up on the Facebook, um, studio. And I just want to put in plug in for both of those groups. You know, they're great. Uh, get in this, get in the studio, you get in the instructor club. Mm-hmm. I was looking at the numbers say there's only, there's like 45,000 in the, in the studio, you, and there's only 4,000 in the instructor club. Mm-hmm. That means that out of the entire world, there's only 4,000 people or so in the instructor club. Mm-hmm. And then there's your group too, which I've, I've found extremely valuable. I love participating, trying to help, and and in that group, uh, just as a kind of it's almost like a meta on the yeah. on the group, you know, where you could talk about it there in a safe place. And but uh, so I've enjoyed that. And actually, I got to say, back up a couple steps is that when I was first getting started, um, I found your I found your course. It was the combination of your graphics and like your you know the, a personal you know, your, your picture with the graphic, it was the green one, the, the mm-hmm. older one. Mm-hmm. And that was, I, and I paid out of pocket for that. And I haven't watched all of that yet. Cause you know, I, I've been able to get going with just a little bit of help. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but yeah, so that's how I found you was, was, you know, there's, I probably typed in Udemy course creation and, <laughs> and, uh, I saw the numbers that you had, it looked like a legitimate course of so the reviews, the numbers, a personal connection. I I'm big on, uh, recording my video it, down in the lower part of the screen too. Mm-hmm. I like to make a connection with my students. Some people do a green screen, but some people will just do the PowerPoints, right? And they, you're hearing a voice, but it's not it's not anybody special. It's just, a, you know, it's a voice. You look at like a Nick Walter and the kind of impersonality that he'll infuse into his courses, you're getting not just the course, but you're getting some comedy, you know, with Nick Walter. Totally. And actually, you know, Nick and I just put together a course and mm-hmm. it was awesome to see that because, you know, I try to be friendly and try to put myself on camera, but Nick is definitely someone to look at and to, to yeah. learn from because just the way that it is like learning from a friend and that's way better. I mean, so backing up just a little bit, though, I think, you know, making a sc- slideshow based course is the easiest uh, but and then so this thought of adding video to it seems a little bit more complicated. So okay. uh, break down what the for you what you found the easiest way to do that and make sure that it is high enough quality to pass the Udemy standard standards. OK, so OK, so I have to put in a huge plug for Screencast-O-Matic for those getting started. Right. There's a, all the question. How do I get started? There's definitely Camtasia. There's Adobe Premiere. Uh, there's some of the free ones. Um, I, I paid actually $30 for three years of Screencast-O-Matic because I didn't want it was, I was getting started on a budget and Camtasia was a little bit out of the budget at that time. And I was like, okay, I needed to record my screen, Screencast-O-Matic, uh, you know, 30 bucks <laughs> for three years. And with that program, I can just, re- I can record my screen and I have a, I have a built-in laptop camera, which is what I'm on right now. And so you can just record your screen and your webcam at the same time. So I'd be, I'd get it going and I would drive my mouse and explain and it, it just record me it would record me talking. Mm-hmm. As well. So it was and I think Camtasia does the same, you know. Got it. And so for that you were it was just using the internal webcam which is great. Mm-hmm. Were you doing any sort of did you get lights or were you just setting up lights so that you, you had enough light on your face or were just not even worrying about that? Yeah, it, it wasn't even yeah, it wasn't even that. It was just just me there at the table and recording. And what about your microphone? You mentioned that a few of your videos didn't get approved. Uh, so what did you do right. uh, to do to change right. that? Yeah. So 
like I said, I, I was trying to start on a budget and it's kind of overwhelming the number of microphones there are to choose from. Uh, as you watch the studio and the threads of what rec people recommend for microphones, you would see like the Snowball come up and the Yeti and a few others. And, um, but I was like, I was doing it on a budget and I, I tried to record it with the, uh, I was in a bigger room in my kitchen with a, with the laptop microphone and um, I submitted that off to, to Udemy to get approved and, and it, it came back and it failed on, on audio quality. I was pretty, I'm pretty sure it's been a few, few months now, but, um, um, and I had already been kind of looking at microphones and I kind of took that as my, I was like, you know, I, I was pretty serious regardless of the success of the power wheels course. I've, I felt like this is something that I want to be a part of, you know, for a long time. I, it was just it was just a good enough fit and the opportunity that's, that's there and still there, and so I took that plunge and uh, and I went and I went and bought a, the Blue Yeti. And I was a little bit disappointed because it was actually so sensitive that I still had to learn how to use the, the Blue Yeti. Uh, if you know, turn the gain up and if it's picking up all these sounds on my desk, then I was looking at at uh, boom, you know, the those the lap the microphone stands, um, and without having to. I haven't got a stand yet, I, but this has definitely improved my my uh, audio quality. But I was going to say, if you're just getting started, you probably and like you recommend, the Blue Snowball is kind of like that happy medium. You know, fifty bucks, not a hundred bucks. Get the Blue Snowball and give and give it a try. You can always upgrade your equipment later. But I would, if I would, if I had a uh, hundred bucks to spend, it would be on a Blue Snowball and on Screencast-O-Matic or something like that. That, I mean, I think that's perfect. And that's like you said, the yeah. hundred dollar course startup. That's really all you need to to test it out and yeah. to make it easy. Because when I was starting out, and I think a lot of people try to piecemeal these things, they use the free webcam or screen recording software, and then they have to figure out how to edit their videos. And it's it's yeah. okay. If you don't have a budget at all, it's okay to get started that way. But if you can just invest a tiny bit. Compared to any other business, this is like so cheap to start up, and so for a hundred bucks, those are the two. I totally agree; those are two great yeah. options to get started. Screencast-O-Matic has awesome built-in editing. If you, I mean, it's just really intuitive. If if you can't figure it out just on the fly, you can go Google it and get a YouTube video on it. They have a lot of trainings; super user-friendly. I love it. Um, the thing that made me upgrade to Camtasia was the multi-track editing, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a big believer of multi, multiple camera angles on a shot or cutting away to, uh, to slides or other footage, the B-roll type idea. And uh, that's really easy to do with Camtasia with in, in any kind of multi-track editor. And that's my only hang-up with Screencast-O-Matic, that it doesn't really make that easy. Okay, so yeah, I've never actually used Screencast-O-Matic, so is it difficult to like add b-roll footage or videos or photos yeah it's kind of a linear editor mm -hmm. you can really kind of cut and paste insert you can do blurs and overlays and mm -hmm. and you know you have a lot of control for what you're you're getting a huge value for what you're paying for yeah um it's a and i would just even still today now i have them both um you know i'm kind of like oh i bought camtasia i ended up buying camtasia should i not have bought screencast-o-matic i'd say still start with that one. Yeah. Um, it's such a great tool for beginners too. Yeah. And I know my buddy Davis Spino, he's taught like 50 plus courses mm -hmm. and he, he, he's used Screencast-O-Matic for all of them. So yeah, it's definitely and Scott Duffy as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's kind of the equipment that you recommend starting out with. That's awesome. So, okay. So we're kind of jumping back and forth, but <laughs> I'm trying to, you know, imagine you and I've done the same thing. You're looking at this Facebook group with 30,000 members thinking, Oh, if only like a certain percentage of them bought yeah. the course, I would be sitting pretty yeah. really good. What, you know, what, I guess, what was the life lesson in that at the end of the day? Oh man. <laughs> so for me, again, it comes back to that persistence, right? And, and my, you know, my wife, I hate to say it, but she's like, yeah, you know, that, that power wheel store, you know, you spent all that time and you bought, you know, bought that microphone and it didn't really work out. And I was like, what do you mean it didn't work out? I still have like the rest of my life to try to sell that course. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I really do. I, I, I'm going to keep, you have to iterate in software development. You iterate, you get something out there, you try it, you tweak, you experiment, you know, um, here's my latest, here's my latest little, uh, experiment. 
So um, I created, there's this modified Power Wheels group. I created a new group as the admin of it. I mm-hmm. kind of saw the power of being an admin of a group. Mm-hmm. And I called it um, Modified Power Wheels for Absolute Beginners. Mm-hmm. So I was trying to attract that brand new crowd. Not these guys that are all good with their, with their you know, their garages. And I, and so, and, and this may be a new thing, uh, but uh, as an admin, you get those, that chance to ask a couple questions, you know, like, um, what, how many courses do you have on Udemy or, you know, mm-hmm. what track did you, you have these three questions. So one of my questions is, um, if you, if you're interested in some free videos, leave your email. Mm-hmm. And, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm actually experimenting with building a list as being the admin of a Facebook group. And yes, I'm going to have to copy that email out of there every time, you know, it's going to be a manual process. I don't know how to automate that to, you know, build my list that way, but I'm at least going to be able to experiment with dripping them some, some free videos, a soft sell, introduce them, get that awareness, come down that funnel yeah, and then try and then try to, and say, and then give a coupon mm-hmm. and do a hard close or say, Hey, here's a coupon that's good for an, uh, for 24 hours and see if I can get any more bites on it than what I have. Hey, Phil here. Are you enjoying this episode? I really hope you are. And I hope you're learning to become a better online course creator. If you want to fast track your success, head over to onlinecoursemasters.com and get your free trial of the full flagship program, the masterclass for online course creators. Get more information at onlinecoursemasters.com. Well, I think Facebook groups are a great way to grow an audience. And I just started the online course masters group. I had the video school mm-hmm. online page, which isn't as good for growing a community. I'm thinking maybe one thing you can do is if you're and test it out, because I think asking for an email right up front might work and might be like easy for people. Or you might ask the question, are you interested in free videos? Yes or no. And if they respond yes, you just have an opt-in page or something that's already mm-hmm. set up and you just send them the page that has an opt-in form and they can submit their email there and it automatically sends them the the right the videos or something like that rather than having to email them. Do it, I don't know. Test them both out because... Yeah. Um, so I, I had the new group and I would, and I had these beginners in here and then I posted the, I posted the link to my course, the 10, you know, 10 for $10 mm-hmm. and, um, and I just wasn't getting people biting on it. I, I don't know why. So I kind of wanted to try this longer drip campaign of feeding them, getting to know them, you know, giving them value and then asking for the sale rather than just asking for the sale right up front. So yeah, I'm experimenting with that. I've got like 600 people in that group that are just finding it naturally. Nice. So, That's awesome. Not bad for a couple months. Yeah. Yeah. And is that just all organic people just searching for it and finding yeah. it on Facebook? Cool. Absolutely. That's yeah. awesome. Um, That's pretty cool. So that was your first course. Let's talk about your second course, and <laughs> which is on a different topic. And right. I don't know, was it more successful or not? So I, I always knew that I had my my true golden ticket, kind of my feather in my cap, and you know it as a backup option with, with my technical skills as an AWS solutions architect. And, but I didn't want to, you know, put, make a 20 hour course. I kind of wanted just to knock out a course and, and actually, and just throw it up there and see how it did. I didn't want to invest a ton of time because it does take time to make these high quality courses. Um, first I got to backtrack a little bit and say that this power Wheels course, I, I equal that to your, like your baseball course. I always loved that. I, you know, that I found your baseball course. It was truly something you did because you loved it. Right. And, yeah, and something you wanted to share fun. with the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so I knew that I had in my, in my, uh, in my, I don't know <laughs> what I'm trying to say. I knew that I had in my back pocket, this idea that I, that I could always go and make this, the technical course. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but man, I'll tell you, time is as a premium. I'm, so I'm still working for, I still work full time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have the birthday party power wheels business. I have the window cleaning business. I have four boys and a family. So I'm totally slammed on time. Um, and honestly what I did to record, um, that second course is I used my holiday time. I used my PTO. I took a day off from work and, um, and I actually went, I actually left the house like I would at the normal time. And I just went and recorded and, and I, I took, I straight through eight hours and then I record, I edited it later. My wife didn't even know what, I was cause gonna, I just, I, I was going to yeah. ask, but did your wife know about it? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and that's hard because she's not the, she's not the most supportive of, 
of my, you know, because anytime anything I'm doing outside of, you know, is me not with the kids and with the mm-hmm. family, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but luckily, my job, you know, I have I have quite a bit of PTO built up, and I just wanted to to do that. Even on my vacation right now, I just it for me, I just enjoy the process of course creation and and marketing. I just want to take courses and and make courses. Mm-hmm. Um, but what, okay, so the, so what the course was is Amazon has these dash buttons. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if you, if you guys have seen them or not, but uh, there's these little dash buttons. You can order your Tide, your detergent, whatever. You push the little button, and it orders on Amazon Prime your, your stuff, and it's there at your doorstep in two days. Um, they came out with a programmable one. So they have this – it's called the IoT, Internet of Things. It's going to be a huge, a huge industry shift. All these different Internet-connected devices talking to, to each other. The car is talking to each other. The car is talking to the lights. Your your smart homes, right? Everything connected to everything else. So this is a huge uh, shift, you know, in, in technology of all these interconnected devices speaking to each other over the internet. And I had this little idea to where if you have take this programmable button, you push the button, and it can send, it can fire off a lambda, which is it fires off this code that's hosted in AWS, and then it actually posts to a Slack channel, which is like another messaging s- platform similar to uh, to Skype, mm-hmm. and uh, I thought I could knock. I thought it'd be a quick little course. It ended up being an hour long, mm-hmm. and I put it out there, and I started to see the potential of Udemy because I started to actually get some sales. It was still pretty slow going. Nothing, nothing to write home about, mm-hmm. and. In fact, I was happy enough with it that I was still I was still playing like a course three, and I still loved it, everything about course creation, and uh, I've got lots of ideas for courses. But it wasn't yeah, it wasn't anything super special, and it's still only been out for just a couple of months. But I could definitely see the traction, and a lot of my people, were, a lot of my students were coming from India, mm-hmm. and um, I I fell in love with like waking up in the morning and checking that that I had new students coming in because because I because I'm here in the states they're in India while I was sleeping you know they're literally I'm literally making money while I'm sleeping or literally yesterday on the 4th of July uh, you know making money while on holiday not working now um, you could say was I making money uh, passively or was I just finally getting paid for the work I did earlier right and I just want to do some – it's just some basic math that you people should be working out in their heads. Take your take your your profits and your time and your expenses. Um, you know, look at what you've put into your microphone and your stuff. You've got to pull out those expenses before you before you really realize your profits. But the other thing is is realize, hey, I I spent ten hours on this course, and and now uh, six months later, looking back, I can see that I've made. X amount in that in that ten hours that I spent, right? So, it's pretty basic math. But let's say I've made four hundred dollars on that course so far. Mm-hmm. Well, looking back on that, um, if I spent ten hours doing that and I've got four hundred dollars at that time, now I'm making forty bucks an hour for that time spent. The question is, is now what do I, you know, maybe that's about what I make at my day job is forty, fifty bucks an hour. So. Then that's you can say that's at least worth my time to do. Is it worth taking my day off? I don't know. So you have to kind of run that math. But there's also like this uh, there's this acceleration effect where if you stay with it, right, and then you start to cross promote, and you and you build this network effect. People know you. You start to build a brand, and then it's going to be kind of kind of hard to calculate just what what it was that that uh, made the sale, mm-hmm. right? And so. But there is definitely some ROI math to do, uh, and and what I believe is that the time you, if you can get that time, whether it's p- your your paid time off, or getting up early or staying up late, I believe that that time that you spend creating courses will will prove itself to be extremely valuable time spent. I, it may be hundred dollars an hour, two hundred dollars an hour. Yeah, and so it's worth it. You've got to find that time. It, that's the exactly right there. That's why this is so awesome and. How long have you been on Udemy? Like, when did you launch the first course? Um, like in January of this year. So it's only been like s- six months, basically, at the time of recording yeah. this. So yeah. imagine, like you, you're saying, like those hours, $40 an hour in five years might be 
three four hundred dollars an hour exactly. in terms of payment and and like you said it is i've seen and i know from all the other people that do this that i know of it is this accelerated growth and the more courses you have the they kind yes. of build off each other and even though my older courses don't make as much money as they did when i launched them or even the first few months or first right. few years or first year I'll, most of my courses still make some sort of sales and it's all right. I would say at this point, passive, I have this very popular YouTube video about the 10 p ways that I make passive income. And it's the most controversial video too, because there's half the people who say none of these things are passive. Like I'm talking about online courses, writing eBooks, uh, putting mm -hmm. out YouTube videos, even things like investing. And there are a lot of people who are looking for these like I don't know, secret ways to make money without doing any work at all. But in terms of my definition of passive income, this fits in it. You're doing the work now and later on it's, mm. it is going to be more passive and you're going to be, you know, you're not trading your, your hours for dollars anymore. And that's, that's exactly. what's exciting. So for this second exactly. course, which is, you know, I, I would say probably a bigger audience, anything to yep. do with Amazon and also Amazon web services, what uh, was it still just organic sales at this point or are you promoting it anyway? So a lot of it is just um, it, I, I, you know, I found a few, I'm not really that great at, at the, the second half of the, 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 the course marketing. That's kind of my weaker um, point. Um, and luckily, a lot of it has been a lot of it started to get picked up by Udemy organic. Mm -hmm. um, so I I. I believe in like stuff like posting links and getting your name out there. I like the idea of a, of a YouTube channel, right. And putting the, the intro and the, the, the link, the, put it in your course, your, your cards, mm -hmm. the links to the, your course and different things. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of it's been organic. In fact, it was kind of slow. And I have to tell you this little, this little trick that it's just, it's just specific to me. But, uh, so I did, I took, I took, um, Scott Duffy's a uh, Udemy SEO course mm -hmm. and nothing in it so far had been like super groundbreaking, but what it did is it slowed me down and maybe look at my courses with, with fresh eyes. And, uh, this, here's a little trick that I did that totally worked. Um, in my, in my case is uh, I knew that Ryan's course on, or I knew in just in general that AWS solutions architect certificate was a hot course with thousands of students. And I hold that certificate. Mm. So now I change my little course. Uh, in the subtitle, it says taught by an AWS certified solutions architect. So people that are looking for that course now, and, and I watched it, and it totally, within a, within a hours or, or a day or so, my course jumped in the, in, the, in the page rankings. And now I'm on a new, I'm a, I can tell I'm on a new trajectory for or, uh, organic. I'm probably going to have uh, double my sales of last month. Wow. So... That's cool. So, and like I said, yeah, so like nothing groundbreaking in the course, but it slowed me down. It helped me understand the idea of course velocity, of reviews, of um, of subtitles, the, of the SEO kind of things. And these are kind of things I kind of knew, but it, but what it did was it slowed me down and made me look at it with fresh eyes again to see how I could do it. And that was an idea that came to mind, and it totally worked yeah. uh, based, on, based on things I'm seeing. Um, that, that's, so I was just going to say, that's like Go the ahead. beauty of, beauty of Udemy right now. At least you can still play around with keywords and see kind of those direct results like within a couple yes. hours or within a day. And so for anyone listening, if you're struggling to get your course ranked, it does reviews and those kinds of things definitely come into play and they're really important, but also just playing around with like the keywords that people are searching for and not that, you know, I think you're the per that's a perfect example of a legitimate way to put a keyword that exactly. matches the course. You know, we're not going to keyword stuff our courses with random keywords that don't have anything to do with it. But if you have any sort of certification or if it's related to a topic or something like that, by all means, add those yeah. keywords. So, um, definitely. Yeah. And the other thing is like, like my, like my course that isn't doing that well, just so it doesn't go stale, I'm just like, why not give it away? 
you know, why not give it away and get some more reviews, have the enrollments be, be climbing, have the reviews be climbing. Don't let it go stale just because it's not selling. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, I wanted to um, in order to keep my my course from going stale, I wanted to give a couple hundred coupons out if, if people are interested uh, to kind of reward those who are listening to the podcast early as they come online. Um, and oh. so I've got a special promo code that's going to work for both of my courses. It's OCM 2017. OCM Online Course Masters 2017. That will get you a free access to my Power Wheels course if you happen to have kids and want to learn how to make them go faster or use the aftermarket batteries. Or you can, if you're interested in the tech side on the Amazon Web Services button course that I have, I'd love to have you in the course there. Perfect. So, well, I really little... appreciate that. And I'll sh include those links on the show notes, which you can find at onlinecoursemasters.com. And I think everyone, even if you're not interested in, you know, souping up your power wheels, I think it'd be interesting for people just to enroll to see how James is actually creating his courses, to see the quality, what he's talking about with the cameras he's using to, you know, I think it's a good idea just to learn from how all these other different instructors are creating their courses. So thank you so much for doing that. So, okay, so you did your AWS class. What's what's next for in terms of classes for you? Right. So uh, kind of in the vein, same vein as, as your video school online, your online course masters um, or Joe Paris. He's got a six figure um, income group and in his his class there. I kind of think that uh, I could be like the AWS training academy. You know, mm -hmm. I could be this this um, have my own. I, I'm, I'm definitely interested in the idea of self-hosted. I like you know, the diversification across Udemy. And I haven't looked at too much at Teachable or Thinkific or, or membership sites on WordPress. Um, but I'm definitely interested in having higher ticket items uh, th that I control the traffic to. Um, and so if I started, um, AWS is such a gold mine for online course teaching because there's so many topics. It's changing all the time. It's super hot. Super high demand. I was at the the global conference at in Las Vegas last year, and it was just packed. I mean, you could it was like standing room only, and it's such a hot topic. And and um, so I was thinking I could build these little courses that feed into the into the master course, or that or I could, in my bonus lecture I could feed them to the to the online school. Um, that's just a ton of work. I don't know. I mean, it's just a huge amount of work to to be able to do that. I think Ryan's course on AWS is great. I've got a lot of ideas that I think I could make it an uh, even va more valuable course um, and kind of get and make and give them a little bit of a, of some competition in that space. I think there's room for, um, for some more courses on that topic. Um, I also, my third course is actually on window cleaning. Mm. So this is this, um, we're well, talking about the range of, you know, from power wheels to window cleaning and, <laughs> yeah. and AWS. So I talk about the ADD, which is why this, this interview has been all over the place too. But, um, <laughs> so I clean windows and it, it, clean windows is like a great, uh, awesome job for college students, high school students. You can make 20, 30 bucks an hour. And, uh, and so I'm trying to record the process of teaching people how to clean windows. I actually have this idea to, to combine this window cleaning training uh, with um, with like a with a business venture to like mm -hmm. uh, to I can like remote, let's say like you're in California. I have no presence in California, right? But if I can put up a website in California for California targeting your areas for window cleaners, and uh, I can say, hey, I'm I'm look, I'm I, I'm cleaning windows in this area. And then on the flip side, I can say, hey, I'm, I'm hiring. I'm looking to hire window cleaners. If I can hire window cleaners and train them remotely, get them to buy the ladder and the squeegee and stuff, and then with Facebook ads or other means of advertising to actually get window cleaning jobs and connect the two, I, I could be laying the, the foundation for a, a, national, a national company using the you know video training. Yeah. Right? I could totally, just, I mean, if you can lay out a process and, you know, have the whole business plan set up, you know, for the different, I don't know, it, it's probably not that complicated of a business in different states. It's probably right. pretty similar. Um, and yeah, just lay out everything. And of course, you know, talk about how to properly clean windows and use your methods and tools that you mm -hmm. recommend. Um, that 
does seem like something that could potentially grow. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's uh, it's expertise that I had, you know, in college. I, I did it. For, I've, I've had the business for many years. And uh, and so I may not even that's not going to be a great fit for you to me. Yeah. But the fact that I now have this skill set, I have this skill set to create, you know, these video trainings and because uh, no one's going to go in there looking, you know, it's, or Udemy organic, you know, searching on how to clean windows professionally. Yeah. But I can now take that skill set and I can sell kids. I can sell kids and college students on a great summer job. And it totally would be a great summer job rather than them working fast food or or some or some other type of job and get them hooked on entrepreneurship and, you know, doing their own thing and setting their own hours. So that's kind of the the next I got most of. I've got most of the stuff uh, filmed. I'm I'm on the, it's on the chopping block, you know, getting it, um, getting it perfected before I get it published. But yeah, that's I mean that's an idea I have that's uh, used for um, uh, to po- potentially do a, a national window cleaning company. Wow, you know, it's well, just insane. Well, and like I'm thinking, even if you do put it on Udemy, Udemy does have mm-hmm. such weight for SEO. So sometimes, you know, you'll be searching for a topic on Google and a Udemy course will pop up. So, you know, that's an argument for putting on Udemy too, just to, just to have it and use that sort of traffic source. Absolutely. Um, Yeah. That sounds pretty cool. (laughs) So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of this, I, I, I feel like I have I have big ideas and I'm, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to put some time and energy into them. I, I, I have my safe and secure nine to five. I love, I love my job. The people I work with, uh, it's afforded me great opportunities to, to do the work I do in an enterprise setting, right? Mm-hmm. Get an enterprise experience that I can then turn around and teach. Um, and for example, you know, as part of my work, we were just, we just flew out to Seattle to AWS headquarters and, uh, you know, over the lunch break, I snuck out and got out my GoPro and was like, Hey guys, welcome to my course, you know, and so it was the, I was kind of to play both worlds, Yeah, you know, enterprise, uh, you know, working for BYU and then go back and, you know, do welcome to my class uh, for Udemy or. Well, I'm going to play devil's advocate a little bit because, you know, I think it's great. The fact that you have a full time job allows you to, you know, experiment with these different things. But now that you saw that your second course on an AWS topic was actually more successful than than your first course has been doing decent. What? Well, why didn't you just dive right into another course about something AWS? AWS. Um, that's a great question. I'm um, putting you on the spot, but I think it's important for yeah. people to know, like, yeah, like it's okay maybe to not do that. It's okay, or yeah, you know, I'm just wondering what. Okay. Okay. Here, here's the, here's the honest answer is because, um, I have leads coming in right now for window cleaning, mm-hmm. right? I have like stuff, I have jobs going undone. It's summer, like right now. And I feel like if I could just get it done, I could maybe still tap into, that's more of that urgency, right? Yeah. Whereas the other AWS stuff, AWS stuff is going to kind of be there, uh, and, you know, and I have ideas, um, Maybe my problem is I have too many ideas and not enough implementation <laughs> implementation of them. <coughs> yeah. So I think I think that was probably the the reason is like I've got like hundreds or thousands of dollars of window cleaning that um, I'm sending them off to these other companies, but I'm not really hearing back if they're doing them or getting or getting paid for them. Mm-hmm. So I just wanted to have that control. Mm-hmm. I think that's really the answer. Um, that and just and just time. Yeah, but. But uh, no, that's a fair question. But AWS is definitely going to be going to be my, my. If I had to say what's going to be my my one thing, mm-hmm. it would be like AWS. It has to be. I mean, yeah, I think. Yeah, I mean that's where the world's going. So it seems like yeah. where you know the the bread and butter might come from too. Cool. So yeah. let's. What's like your final piece of advice for someone who's wants to get into this, but maybe was is in your position and doesn't have that mindset of persistence and launch a course thinking they're going to make $10,000 and they end up making a few bucks in their first month. What, what's your final piece of advice for someone just getting started out? Okay. So I just want to say that, uh, I believe that the opportunity of teaching online, um, is real. Like, 
as you, as a, on the back end of Udemy, you see the individual students, the the different currencies that that people are coming from India, from Brazil, from the United States, uh, the in from you know different currencies and and whatnot, and um, like you have the potential to reach a worldwide audience with your with your courses, I and mean, that is just a phenomenal opportunity, especially given the low cost, relatively low cost of getting started. And um, I do remember being overwhelmed with all that there is to know, you know, creating courses and, and there's so much to know. And, uh, you know, the, the video cameras, the microphones, the screencasting, the software, and, and that might be a lot for people. I just say that, you know, remember that a course is just a bunch of MP4 files. You can make those on your iPhone. You can make them using Screencast-O-Matic. There's lots of free resources, paid resources, resources that are out there to help you along the way. But you just have to start with where you're at. Um, if I had one piece of advice, it'd be to buy a blue snowball for fifty bucks and buy Screencast-O-Matic for fifteen dollars and get your get your your uh, get your screen and start recording your screen and get started today. Love it. I think it's kind of just the just do it attitude, which I love. And you kind of learn along the way, iterate and Absolutely. and stick with it. And iterate. that's what I've seen has been the most successful path. So uh, yeah, you. the, like you're just uh, the, the the learning curve. You have to do the first things before you're even ready to learn about the next things. Like my little tweak to the Udemy SEO that really helped me. I had to have published the course and been on my second course and there's just all these things. And so it's, it's like a, it's like a traffic lights. It, you, you're like want to get from point A to point B mm-hmm. and you're sitting there at point A and you're waiting for all the lights to, to be green. You're saying, Hey, I'm not going to move until all the lights mm-hmm. are green. You cannot do that. Right. Uh, you have to be willing to take a green light and go and go to this and go get a red light and then go again. You cannot wait for all the lights to be green You've got to start with where you're at, and just because you recorded some lectures doesn't mean they have to get, they have to go and be published, right? There's no there is no harm in in taking a bunch of cuts and a bunch of you know a bunch of recordings when you're getting started. I love that that green light idea. That's perfect. I think people get a lot really caught up on being at a certain red light along the path. Well, this has been an awesome interview. I think people will really enjoy it, especially people who are just getting started out, which is most people listening. So if people yeah. want to find out more about you, I'm going to include links to the courses you so generously sure. offered. But where else can people find you and your courses online if they want to just find out more about James? Hurst? Sure. So um, I'm on LinkedIn uh, and I'm on the the Facebook groups in the uh, Udemy Studio, Udemy Instructor uh, groups. I'm in your group. Um, and yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Well, I'll include links to, especially your Udemy profile and, and LinkedIn on the website. So that'll be perfect. Thank you. Cool, James. Well, this has been awesome. And thanks so much for being so active in the Facebook group. Uh, it's people like you that keep it going and keep it engaging and exciting for new people who join the group just to see people actually involved. So I, I really appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, thank you for being on the show. Awesome. I'm, thank you so much. Yeah, I'm glad you created the group. I, it's, it's been a high value for me. So thank you so much. Perfect. Okay, James, well, have a great rest of your trip and uh, we'll bump into each other online. Okay. Sounds good. Bye. I hope you enjoyed that episode. As always, if you want to fast track your success, head over to onlinecoursemasters.com and sign up for your free trial of my flagship program, the Online Course Masters Masterclass. Yep, that's right. It's a masterclass designed to take you from zero to hero, creating and selling your very own online courses. If you haven't done so yet, please leave a review for this show wherever you listen. This is how we can help expand our audience and help teach the world. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next week in the next edition of the Online Course Masters Show.